more of pseudo kinship. So this whole notion, again, of pseudo-kinship, we are a species where we're not recognizing individuals by smell, all of that. We're doing that cognition stuff, but don't forget the kibbutz study, but we're doing that cognition stuff, and thus we can do pseudo-kinship, and thus we can be manipulated by powers that be, by governments, by religions, into viewing non-relatives as more related to us and all of that. These are very abstract processes. And it brings up another realm, an extremely abstract realm, that pushes for more cooperation and less violence. And this goes back to what I was talking about the other day, the neurobiology of symbols. How we code for certain types of symbols, certain metaphors in our brain. And that's back to that whole world of you're using the same part of the brain for disgusting food and moral disgust, warm drink, warm personality, that weird concrete literalness, because you got to put metaphors somewhere when humans started developing them. The outcome of that being that metaphors can be extraordinarily powerful. Powerful. And a number of researchers, probably the person most visible in this realm, an, ec an economist at the University of Michigan named Robert Axelrod, has been doing a whole lot of work showing, in a sense, the importance of symbols in peacemaking. And it makes perfect sense. You take the extreme rationalist view of humans as economic machines, and what peacemaking is going to be purely about is figuring out contested resources and how they are going to be divided up. And what Axelrod and others show instead is this whole irrational realm of be respectful of somebody else's symbols and figuring out how you're going to divide up the land suddenly becomes a lot less important. The power of symbols over rational contested resources. And he studied things like how a critical thing that happened in peace coming to Northern, Northern Ireland was at one juncture a bunch of the Sinn Féin, however that's pronounced, the ex-military wing of the IRA that were just beginning to have extremely mistrustful negotiations with some of the Protestant sort of unionists and all of that. They did something outrageous. They sent a 50th wedding anniversary gift to this guy, Ian Paisley, who was the murderous head of the sort of Protestant death squads there. Somebody just decided to try this, and this was a massive breakthrough. Anyone who saw that movie Invictus or have read about it, the utter brilliance of Nelson Mandela of having spent his time in prison learning to be completely fluent in Afrikaans so that when he was sitting down and starting to negotiate with these people, the fact that he could sit there and speak in their language, a language that is so laden with symbolic importance to Afrikaners, that that was a gigantic symbolic coup of Mandela embracing the sport that was the very very symbol of apartheid, of Mandela doing very subtle things that a number of people pointed out who were involved in the negotiations. Okay, Mandela, just when he's gotten out of prison and he's about to meet with some of the leaders of the government and some of the most right-wing opponents to any sort of peace, and so we need a conference room, and no, that's not what he did. He insisted they would have the meetings in his home, his home that he had just returned to. Okay, well, let's clear off the dining room table. No, that's not what he did. He would insist they did this in the living room, where they would sit down on stuffed armchairs and couches. And something that he did apparently always at these is he would sit down on the couch and gesture to whoever was likely to be the most impossible foe and say, come sit next to me sit next to me on the couch, and would proceed to jump up at various points to say, can I get you some more tea? Do you want some more? There would be food. There would be biscuits. There would be whatever. Brilliant, brilliant use of symbols. If I'm sitting here and this guy keeps jumping up and getting more, more cookies just when I was getting a hankering for some more cookies, maybe not so different after all. People who get cookies for other people make the world more peaceful or something or other. 